Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my presentation which is about uh, the development of novel self-centering polyurethane piston-based bracing. My name is Anas Isa and this work has been done under the supervision of Dr. Shahri Alam. Uh, this work uh, is conducted uh, at the School of Engineering at UBCO in the Applied Laboratory for Advanced Materials and Structures. So for today's presentation, I'm going to go through a few elements. First of all, I'm going to give a quick background about the topic, the materials that are used in this system. I will show some of the experimental results that have been uh, obtained and finally I will provide some conclusions. So as we all know, earthquakes are very critical uh, issue that we have to address uh, all around the world. Um, According to the Insurance Bureau of Canada, uh, a total economic losses of a major earthquake in the west coast of Canada can uh, produce $127.5 billion of loss. So uh, uh, eventually this is a huge loss and we have to take immediate measures to avoid such economic and human losses on the same uh, page. So uh, bracings have been one of the uh, most widely used techniques to uh, resist lateral loads, loads uh, mainly uh, earthquakes and winds. Uh, these bracings uh, uh, come in different shapes and different configurations, uh, but uh, for conventional ones there have been many problems and issues where we see different types of failure modes such as in-plane and out-of-plane buckling or the failure in the connections. So these uh, uh, type of failures uh, can cause huge, again, economic losses that it means we have to replace the system and the adjacent members and in many cases we have to demolish the building. Uh, what we try to develop here based on that is uh, what we call self-centering polyurethane piston based bracing. So from the name you can tell it's a, 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 a mechanical system that has a piston moving part and it, it uh, utilizes the polyurethane as a material uh, and also it has the ability to uh, self-center itself after the loading. So uh, uh, the good aspects about this system that it, it is light in weight, uh, it, is, it has some good self-centering behavior and <coughs> it is relatively cheap to construct. So uh, as we can see there are few simple parts that constitute the uh, uh, system. Uh, we have uh, two halves of steel tubes, two ends, uh, inside which we have two uh, pieces of polyurethane cylinders and in the middle uh, uh, centered between them a steel piston that moves in both direction to apply tension and compression on the system. So uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, mainly the two components or the two materials that uh, uh, contribute into the uh, building uh, into the system here is, is simply polyurethane and, and steel and as we all know steel has some good uh, strength, ductility, durability and stiffness uh, characteristics that is utilized to provide the overall stiffness uh, 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 integrity of the system. On the other hand the main component that takes the load is the uh, polyurethane so uh, this material has a high load and bearing axial capacity. Uh, it, it also has some tr strong bonding properties. It performs well under heavy loads and, and, and impact loads and also it has very good self-centering behavior which is very critical in uh, seismic applications. So uh, first of all we, we started after fabricating the system to apply some uh, uh, different loading protocols. Uh, we used the universal testing machine uh, uh, to install the specimen between the two heads of the machine and uh, we attached the uh, needed uh, strain gauges and LVDTs to measure different performance parameters such as strains and loads and, and so on. So uh, as you can see here this is a, a actual picture of the system uh, the fabrication and so on. Uh, after uh, 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 installing the specimen it, it becomes as one, uh, 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 one piece or one system here that as I mentioned uh, is installed in the machine. Different product protocols have been applied, uh, different cycles uh, uh, and, and uh, it applies both tension and compression to the um, system and we, we try to increase, to increase the amplitude of the uh, uh, displacement to see how much capacity it can take and as we'll see later that it has considerable amount of uh, strain deformation uh, ability with very good self-centering behavior. So we, we first started with around 
15 millimeter and then we move to 22 millimeter and in some cases we apply 25 millimeter which uh, imposes 10 percent strain to the polyurethane and as we can see we have <coughs> uh, some uh, uh, good energy dissipation behavior some uh, uh, also very good self-centering ability and as I mentioned the the, the system uh, was very stable and we repeated the test several times with different rates as I will show in the next so here we apply different strain rates for the different loading protocols as I mentioned uh, it is considerably uh, noticeable here that uh, with increasing the loading rate starting from uh, the original uh, rate all the way up to 100 times the original rate which was one uh, inch per minute so we started from one inch per minute two inches per minute five ten fifty and hundred for both loading protocols and as you can see that with uh, the higher the rate actually we we uh, can observe higher uh, uh, maximum uh, uh, force uh, or axial force capacity and also some increase in the energy dissipation capacity um, if you look at the figure at the left here you can see a comparison between the original rate and 100 times the rate so the two extremes and you can clearly see the difference between the two uh, behaviors in terms of, of uh, actually in, in, in some extent uh, better behavior higher energy dissipation higher load carrying capacity uh, and as, as I mentioned before here you can see a 10% uh, strain demand uh, the, the, the system still went back to its original shape and the residual deformation were uh, 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 relatively small so in conclusion uh, the, the, the system as we have seen perform well under tension and, and compression it has a uh, very good self-centering behavior uh, it also has some uh, high strain capacity compared to other material this is actually very high uh, some other materials like shaping or alloys can take six to eight uh, uh, percent before it actually yields so this is uh, reaching ten percent is is actually high uh, it is very light in weight so compared to other systems such as uh, buckling resistant braces or typical or conventional bracings this is very good uh, advantage and also it is relatively cheap alternative so this material is becoming very uh, popular and it is uh, uh, increasing um, its its popularity over the time and been used in many applications uh, such as uh, load barriers and 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 impact uh, kind of isolators and so on so uh, we try to actually bring this material into the uh, seismic or civil engineering applications uh, to serve uh, as a competitive for for uh, other available systems uh, i would like to mention here also that uh, there are uh, uh, different studies that now we are trying to conduct on this system um, we will try to provide some pre-compression to the system to see how the energy dissipation capacity might increase and so on so hopefully we can share these results with uh, with you in the coming uh, uh, conferences and 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 uh, uh, workshops uh, so thank you uh, all for your time and attention uh, and uh, uh, if you have any questions i would be more than happy to answer them you can uh, send me your questions into my email which uh, i will provide in the uh, conference platform thank you again and uh, have a good day